This is the day that our Lord has made. Let us be glad in it as we lift up the name of Jesus. For Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto me. I believe it. I believe people need to be drawn unto Jesus. And I believe that if we lift the Lord up, no matter where we are, he will draw people unto him. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. Now, you know, this Sunday is first Sunday, so you know what you'll need. You'll need your water or your juice. Your water or your juice, and you'll need bread for communion later on. So if you don't have it, I'm going to ask you to stop the tape. Go get your uh, uh, water or your juice and your bread so you'll have it later on when we get ready to do communion. As always, I want to thank you for your support through your tithes, your offering, your prayers, through sending out these videos to your friends and your neighbors. We, we are still in mission for the Lord. And uh, although we are, our building is closed, the church still goes on. The United Methodist Church is in mission around the world, and it does that through our apportionments. And every year, we always pay our apportionments. And we're not able to do that. We will be unable to do it without your help. And so we thank you for allow, helping us to be in mission around the world, all over the world, we are in mission because of our apportionments, and so we thank you for that. Now, I, I, as always, I always tell you, you need your Bible, so get your Bible. If you don't have it, then you can stop the tape and go get it and come back and uh, continue. Our text today is Genesis, the 15th chapter. Genesis, the 15th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Let's listen for the word of God. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. And Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. And then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Now I want to use as a title... Uh, from which to teach and preach today how to effectively use your third eye. How to effectively use your third eye. Repeat after me. How to effectively use your third eye. One more time. How to effectively use your third eye. Do you know what I, I am finding out more and more about myself do, do you know what I am finding myself doing more and more each day I didn't used to do it but I'm finding myself saying it more and more each day I can be in my basement in my office right where I am now and I will say it I can be in my kitchen and I will say it. I can be watching television and I find myself saying it. I can be driving my car down 285 or going up Panola Road and I find myself saying it. I can walk into a store and stroll down the aisle looking for groceries and I will say it. I find myself saying more and more where are my glasses? 
That's right. I find myself saying more and more, wear my glasses. I remember one time I went into a, a CVS store and uh, I was standing at the counter trying to pay for my uh, stuff that I had gotten and I was looking around trying to find my glasses and the lady said what are you looking for I said I'm looking for my glasses so I can see what's on this car and she said they're on top of your head I had them sitting on top of my head <laughs> I told her don't you ever tell anybody that I find myself more and more asking myself where are my glasses I didn't used to have to say that you know getting older is something as you get older somebody said three things happen the first is your memory goes I can't remember the other two <laughs> I heard somebody say that getting older sucks I used to wake up feeling like a million bucks but now it's like I feel like a bounce check I used to be able to pick up my newspaper and read it with my bad eyes. But not now. Now I have to say, where are my glasses? We use, my brothers and sisters, our physical eyes, the two eyes in our heads, to see a whole lot of things. But there is another eye that we have that we barely use. I call it the third eye. It is the eye of faith. Like our physical eye, we didn't create the third eye. God created it. He gave it to those of us who listen to his word and believe it. As believers, we all have faith. But how did we first obtain it? Romans 10, 17 tells us, So faith comes out of hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. How, how did we first believe in Jesus? It was through hearing the word of Christ, which includes all the words included in the biblical text. Someone may have told us about Jesus and all he did, his redeeming power to save us. And as we pondered what that person was saying, we began to appreciate who Jesus is. While the gospel was being put into words to us, our sense of taste for Christ increased until eventually a spontaneous reaction took place in us and what did we do? We believed in him. Previously, we, we, we may not have believed in Jesus, might not have thought about Jesus, or even believed he was real, but through hearing the word of Christ, the eye of faith was positioned and placed in a spot in us. And so we have a third eye now that is supposed to help us to live victoriously it's supposed to help us to live triumphantly it's supposed to um, help us respond right to events in our lives Charles Swindle said life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it we have a third eye to help us to cope and react appropriately to life's issues. But many of us don't use that eye a lot. Some of us use it every now and then. Some of us use it, but we use it ineffectively. Oh, I believe our text today talks about this third eye this eye of faith and shows us how to adequately use it. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but since I have this third eye, I want to know how to use it more successfully. And I believe our text today talks about the third eye and how to use it effectively so that we 
have right thinking so that we can live a victorious and triumphant life. In verses 1 through 3, let's take a look at it and see what this text tells us about this third eye. In verses 1 through 3, we hear God's word emphasizing a request. There is a question asked and an answer given. There is an appeal made and a response to that appeal. The Lord says to Abraham in a vision, as he came to Abraham in this vision, and he told Abraham not to be afraid. Abraham must have been afraid because God what? Told him not to be afraid. What was he afraid of? Well, perhaps he was afraid since he had just won, gotten out of a battle, and, and, and which he won, that the relatives of the soldiers of the king that he had just defeated were going to come after him. Perhaps that's why he was afraid. Perhaps he was afraid because if something happened to him, he had no heir to take over his family, to lead his family. According to customs in that day, if Abraham did not have uh, an heir, his oldest servant would become his heir. The Lord said to Abraham, don't worry, I got your back. You will have an heir who will be of your flesh and blood. Then Abraham, he just keeps on talking. He asks a question. He makes an appeal to the Lord. Lord, you, you, you're going uh, to have to show me because right now I don't see what you see. You're going to have to open my eyes, Lord, because right now at this moment I'm blind to what you're proclaiming. I want you to write this down. This is the first spiritual point. To use your third eye effectively Ask God to open your third eye. I said, ask God to open your third eye. Sometimes, in many of us, we can't see what God is trying to get us to see, to get us to do, because our faith, our third eye, is not open. Or uh, if it is open, it's badly open, it's weak, it is in poor health. It has, to say it another way, calluses on it. And so we have to do, what we have to do is ask God to open our third eye a little more so that we can see what he is seeing. Do you remember when Jesus was teaching the crowd and it got late and Jesus said to his disciples, I want you all to get in the boat and go on over to the other side. I'll meet you there. And so Jesus uh, told them, after I dismissed everybody, I'll come on. You just go on to get in the boat. Well, they got in the boat and they went on. And when Jesus got back over there to the shore, they had gotten so far out. You know what he decided to do? He decided to just walk on the water. And as he was coming towards them, the disciples were looking. Oh, that must be. It was, what is that? A ghost? And uh, Jesus said, oh, take, be of good courage. Don't, don't be afraid. It is I. And Peter said, oh, Lord, that's you. I don't know, Lord, if that's you. I, if that's you, Lord, help me, help me to come out on the water to you. P Peter says, Lord, I, I don't uh, see what you see. Open my eyes so that I can see what you see. To use your third eye effectively, ask God to open your third eye, your eye of faith. You have to ask God to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. When your third eye, your eye of faith is weak, a clothes I have has uh, calluses on it because of doubt, you can't fix that yourself. You need God's help. You need God's power. You need uh, God to lend you a helping hand. You need God to take care of it. 
And so ask him to open your eye of faith a little more. When you ask God to open your third eye, how will he do it? That's a good question. How will he do it? Abraham said, Lord, I don't have an heir. A son, I'm in trouble. Lord, if something happens to me, I, I don't have a male son to take over, to take care of my house. You see, that, that, that was a fear that had Abraham bottled up. A lack of confidence. That was cold feet. I want you to write this down. To open your third eye, God may bring you face to face with your fears like he did Abraham. I say he may bring you face to face with your fears like he did Abraham. What are you afraid of? That may be, that may be the very, very thing that God brings you face to face with. God knows to strengthen you, to strengthen your third eye, you must face your fears. For you see, your fears will paralyze you and keep, keep you from seeing and reaching the dreams and the hopes that God has for you. Many people have cold feet, a strike of terror in their hearts that they go through life running from something <laughs> that isn't after them. Your fears will cause you to spend your life running from something that isn't there. To increase the power of your third eye, God may bring you face to face, face to face, face to face, with your fears. Abraham said, Lord, you've you, you given me no offspring. And so a slave in my house is going to be my heir. God knew what Abraham was going through. He knew what was going on in Abraham's life. Abraham acted like God didn't know what was happening to him. To Abraham, he had an unknown future, but Abraham's unknown future was in the hands of an all-knowing God. God was just testing Abraham to see if Abraham believed that God could turn his mess into a miracle and his test into a testimony. Somebody say amen. I want you to write this down while you're saying amen. To open your third eye, God may strengthen it through tests and trials. To open your third eye, God may strengthen it through tests and trials. Many of us get surprised when tests or trials come our way. But we should not be surprised or caught off guard. God allows a test or a trial to strike a chord in us or took our hearts to strengthen our trust in him. A gym cannot, a, a gym cannot be, uh, 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 a gym cannot be polished uh, without friction, nor a person without test or trials. When God allows my brothers and sisters test and trials to gallop towards you, he is doing it always in your best interest. In 1799, Conrad Reed discovered a 17 pound rock while fishing in Little Meadow Creek. 17 pounds rock. Not knowing what it was made of, his family took it and used it for a doorstop for many years. They just put it on the floor to keep the door open every now and then. And they did that for years. 
So in 1802, his father, James Reed, took it to a jeweler who identified it as a lump of gold worth about $36,000. Do you hear me? That lump of gold, which was used as a doorstop for uh, for doorstop for three years in North Carolina is one of the uh, biggest gold nuggets ever found in the east of the Rockies. Until its uh, composition was determined, my brothers and sisters, its value was unknown. Even so, until the composition of our faith is determined, its strength is unknown. In other words, you don't know how strong your faith is until it's been put in the fire. You don't know how persistent your faith is until it's been put in the oven. God allows tests and trials not to hurt us, not to crush us, but to strengthen us and to prove us to give us a leg up. God allows trials and, and tests to come to put fuel in our tanks, give us a boost, uh, pull into us resilience and, redurance and, 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 redur and endurance and, and, and stamina and steadiness and durability. And 1 Peter 5.10 says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of grace who has called you into eternity through Christ will himself restore and confirm and strengthen and establish you. He's talking about you. J James said it like this, count it all joy, my sisters and brothers. When you meet trials of various kinds, hardships of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Oh, you learn to endure by having your faith tested. You learn uh, to put up with the rough times by having your faith tested. You, you, you learn how to keep on going by having your faith tested. You learn how to stay the course and not get off and keep on running by having your faith tested. tested. You, you learn how to stick to it and stick it out and uh, leave no rock unturned by having your faith tested. Abraham said, God, master, what use is your gifts as long as I am childless? Eleazar of Damascus, of Damascus is going to inherit everything I have. Abraham continued, See, you, you're giving me no children. And now a mere servant of my house is going to get everything I worked for all of my life. Then in the next few verses, the Lord tells Abraham that he is going to have his own son. But he never tells Abraham when. He, he, he doesn't give Abraham, in other words, a date or time or year that he's going to have this son. All God says to Abraham is that you're going to have a son one day. Just because God delays something doesn't mean he is going to deny it. Just because God puts something on hold doesn't mean he's saying no, my sisters and brothers. So I want you to write this down. God may strengthen your third eye through delays. I say he may strengthen your third eye through de delays. God may strengthen your third eye by holding up for a minute what he plans to bless you with. He, he may strengthen your third eye by delaying it for a day or a year or a week or a month 
what he plans to put in your pocket, what he plans to put in your house, what he plans to put in your presence. If God answers your prayer, he is increasing your faith. If God delays answering your prayer, he's training your patience. Somebody say amen. To use your third eye effectively, ask God to open up your third eye, your eye of faith. And to open it up, remember, my brothers and sisters, he may send a test or a trial or a delay. As I kept digging down into the gravel of this text, as I kept on digging down into gravel of this text, I hit a chest box. I hit a chess box that had these words on it, stillness, at rest, quiet period, hush. When I got a, a lot of noise going on in my life, I can't hear anything. I definitely can't hear God. When there's a lot of movement, hustle and bustle, and uproar, I can't hear that small, still voice of the one who placed the sun in the sky and flung the stars across the heavens. I can't hear him. I believe that Abraham was just as human as many of us. And like us, he needed stillness to hear the voice of God. And I believe this moment where God beams into Abraham's presence in a vision, it is a quiet period in Abraham's life because he just came out of some confusion, a battle. And I believe that this moment in our text is a quiet period. And during this period, God shows up and gives Abraham strength. Oh, it's amazing what can come to us in the quiet periods of our lives. If you pay close attention and stay still long enough, you can hear the Lord saying, be still and know that I am God. If you pay close attention and you stay still long enough, you can hear the Lord saying, stay still and see what I can do. If you stay still long enough, you can hear the Lord saying, you don't have to look over your shoulder. I got your back. If you stay still long enough, you can hear God saying, hold your head up and know that I am in control no matter what is going on in your life. I want you to write this down. To use your third eye effectively, make still moments a daily practice. Make still moments a daily practice. Make quiet periods, in other words, a normal routine. I know <laughs> that's against what the world tells you to do. The world says uh, move every chance you get. The, the world says if you're not moving and moving fast, you're lazy. However, if you're serious about strength, if you're serious about strengthening your third eye, you have to fight for your quiet time. Everything is going to try to make off with your quiet time. Everything is going to try to flood you with things to do. Why? So that they can grab hold of your hush moments. It is in those still occasions, those quiet places that God appears 
and refreshes our souls and calms our inner debate and gives us courage, gives us spunk, gives us bravery, gives us boldness, gives us determination, gives us backbone so that we can stand up so that we can tower over our conditions and our circumstances and our situations. To use your third eye effectively makes still moments a daily practice. Later, the Lord spoke to Abraham in the vision. Abraham, don't be afraid. I will protect you. I will be your reward. God will either shield you from it, my sisters and brothers, or take care of you in it. God says to Abraham, I am your reward. But Abraham asked the Lord, all-powerful God, you have given me everything I ask for except children. And when I die, Eleazar of Damascus will get everything I own, houses and cars, everything I got, he's going to get, Lord. You, you have not given me any children, and this, this servant of mine will inherit everything. And the Lord replies, no, he won't. You will have a son of your own, and everything you have will be his. And then the Lord told Abraham, took him outside, and said, look up at the sky and see if you can count the stars. Can you count them? No, you can't. He said, that's how many descendants you will have. Abraham shook his head, threw up his hands, and said, I believe, Lord. I believe, Lord, I believe. And the Lord was pleased with him. You hear me? He was pleased with him. Abraham trusted the Lord, and the Lord recognized Abraham's high moral character. Abraham believed God, and God declared him set right with God. With Abraham's physical eyes, he could only see what he was, what he uh, could touch with his hands. With Abraham's physical eyes, he could only see his troubles, which always kept him on pins and needles. He could all let's see, only see those things that were worrying him to death with his physical eye. And those things kept him on pins and needles. Oh, my brothers and sisters, looking only with the physical eyes, he experienced a lack of confidence. Looking only with his physical eyes his life was thrown into d disorder but when he looked with his third eye his eye of faith it took the edge off of his troubled spirit it reduced the worry in his ill at ease and torn of heart yes God gave us physical eyes but also he gave us spiritual eyes which is your eye of faith and what he tells us in this text and repeatedly throughout the scripture is that he wants us to look more with our third eye it was looking through his third eye that Abraham was able uh, to say Lord I will keep on moving and not lose faith in the end of the story. It was looking through his third eye that Abraham was able to obey when God called him to go out to a place that he was going to receive an inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. 
it was looking through his third eye that Abraham was able to look forward to a city that has a foundation whose architect and builder is God. It was looking through his third eye that John Lewis was able to do what God told him to do and get into good trouble and cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge. It was looking through his third eye that John Lewis was able to fight all of his life for freedom and justice and equality and equal rights for all people. It was looking through his third eye that John Lewis and others were able to sing, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on marching to freedom's land. God wants us to look more through our third eye. There are 7,000 promises of God. Look through your third eye and it will open up all of God's promises for you. But first, second Corinthians 1 20 says for no matter how many promises God has made they are yes in Jesus Christ look through your third eye and God will act on your behalf and fight your battles for you look through your third eye and you will be able to do more than you ever dreamed or thought of look through your third eye and you will be able to hold on even in tough times look through your third eye and you will be able to press on even though you're pressed on every side you will not be crushed you may be perplexed but you will not be driven to despair you may be persecuted but you will not be forsaken you may be struck down but you will not be destroyed hallelujah somebody there is power to overcome whatever you are dealing with use your third power your third eye, your, your eye of faith. I'm a witness. Can I get any witnesses? I said, can I get any witnesses? By faith, you find rest in God. By faith, you find alone God is a rock. By faith, you find that God is your fortress. By faith, you will find God is for you and who can be against you. By faith, not by sight, not by your fleshly eye, but by your third eye, your eye of faith, use it and walls will come tumbling down. Use it and you will be an overcomer more than a conqueror. Use it and you will be a warrior who can conquer all of the devil's territories. Use it and you will defeat the, the Goliaths in your life. God has already given you the strength by giving you a third eye. Use it. And you will not remain a victim, but you will rise up and be a victor. If you're in deep waters, use it, and God will bring you out. If you're in despair, use it, and God will give you the strength to keep on going. Use it, and God will give you strength for every battle and wisdom for every situation and peace in the mirror of the storm and peace that passes all understanding. Use it. He gave it to you for you to use it to help you see what he sees about you and your life. Use it and see what he sees. That no problem is bigger than he is. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for the third eye. And Lord, we pray that you continue to strengthen it. Send us the tests and the trials, but also give us the strength to get through it. And help us understand that just because you delay something doesn't mean that you're saying no to us. 
Help us, Lord, to walk this journey and see what you see about the situation and about our lives. And we will give you all the honor and the glory. Amen and amen. At this time, we will have communion. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us confess together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Oh, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with thy tender great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with heart of repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's continue to pray as I consecrate the communion. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection may be partakers of the divine nature through him who in the same night that he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink all of this for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat and feed on him by faith and with thanksgiving. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was shed for you. Take and drink ye all of this in remembrance that Christ shed his blood for you. Let us pray. God, thank you for Jesus who went to the cross and died that all of us might one day have eternal life in your kingdom. 
thank you for sending your son, especially for us. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus, of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Remember to send this video to three other people that you know. And until next time, you pray for me. And I will be sure to pray for you.